What up? This is Rama Screen, and in the anticipation of the reboot series, The Wonder Years, premiering September 22, well, actually tonight on ABC, I'm here talking with the score composers of this reimagining show, Jacob Yaffe and Rowan Hilton. How are you? Great. Thanks for having us. All is amazing. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for taking the time. Um, confession, even though I'm a millennial, I did not have an emotional connection to the original series uh, You know, when I was a kid. I was more preoccupied with uh, Quantum Leap. So let me start uh, by asking you both, uh, were you familiar with the original Wonder Years uh, prior to getting this gig? And after you got the gig, did you revisit the, the old version to draw some inspiration for your music for this one? Yes, absolutely. Uh, um, yes to both questions. I definitely uh, was a fan of the original series. I remember coming home from school and, and being excited when the show came on. Um, you know, I was very interested in music, um, I mean, ever since I can remember, and I used to always love the, the theme song, uh, the Joe Cocker song from the original, and I remember I'd be in the other room and I'd hear it come on, you come racing in, like, oh, Wonder Years is starting, you know? Um, you know, definitely had a crush on Winnie Cooper uh, when I was a kid, so it just kind of like was the through line throughout the series, uh, and it just felt, um, it felt like a for a kid it felt uh safe to watch but it didn't feel like you were being pandered to uh in the original which um i mean looking back now i realize that's something i i liked about it um and a big part of that was snuffy walden's uh score for the show and the way they approached the music uh for each episode um that did, they did a lot of song licensing uh for the original series and they from what my understanding is just from listening seems like they based a lot of the score cues off the songs they were licensing in each episode. Um, really powerful. Um, it just works really well uh, and engaged me. So, yeah, I yes to both questions. Same for me. Um, Wonder Years was a staple for me growing up. Um, also had a crush on Winnie Cooper like many of a certain age. Mm -hmm. And um, we definitely went back um, to kind of digest in jest um why the show was so impactful to us growing up um and what the what the effect the music had um so yes we spent spent some time watching um the first season for sure um and there's just so many memorable moments um and again also the joe cocker um mm -hmm. rendition of the the beatles song um so iconic um so memorable so so a four yeses to that <laughs> to that question those questions not only do you guys compose the scores but i read on my press note that you also produce some of the songs that are performed by the cast on these episodes talk to me about that were the songs part of the plan from the beginning or was that an idea that came out later on uh big shout out to the music supervisor on wonder years um uh, bert blackerock um uh, is his stage name, Amani Smith. Um, he's just uh, been a great friend and colleague in this, and he throws some amazing ideas at the filmmakers. Uh, and he just, based on the music he heard from us, uh, he just had faith that we could pull it off. I mean, Ron here has got a huge background in producing hit songs. I mean, he produced Super Bass for Nicki Minaj and worked on scores of others. Um, so it's not it's not a, a shocker, uh, but to have us do it for the show and work with Dulé Hill uh, and some of the other actors performing these things, um, you know, it, it takes a lot of faith from the filmmakers and us to allow us the chance to do it. Um, so it's it was sort of baked into the script from the beginning. I think the only question was who's going to do it. Yeah, it, to to be honest with you, when when we first got to read the scripts and to see how much music was in play from multiple characters, we immediately got excited. Um, and as Jacob said, um, Bert just threw out the opportunity for us to reimagine these songs um, from a male perspective um, and kind of reproduce them um, as so, so they match the sonics of the show. Um, and it's been a joy to kind of have that kind of canvas to tell these stories. So we're, we're about, what, five songs deep 
now and mm -hmm. you know you get to hear the first one in the first episode called I Need You More um, and then there will be others to follow and uh, I also read that you center your Wonder Year score around the 1960s era of music including soul Motown R&B that really captures my interest is the uh, is the objective perhaps to try to come up with some uh, sounds that sound funky or groovy, anything like that? Yeah, when the when the moment uh, calls for it, yes. Uh, but the idea is, you know, this is about a family where the father figure is in a band. He's a he's a successful musician, singer, songwriter in the world of the show. Um, in the first episode. Uh, within the world, they hear one of his songs on the radio, and he's singing it, and it's supposed to be his band playing it. So we thought, wouldn't it be cool if the score sounded like it was provided by his band? Hmm. And, you know, a, a Motown era rhythm section, a horn section. Uh, we have strings when the when the moment allows for it, uh, and definitely vocals. There's a, a big a cappella cue in the pilot. And uh, we've just really loved sort of re-envisioning the, the sound of 60s and 70s era bands, but as score. Yeah, it's, it, it's been really cool. I think one of the, the central ideas of the show is a black family coming up in Alabama, in the South. And central to that experience is obviously the church. So th we have some amazing cues that get to take place in a church with that feeling as well as the soul the funk um of that yes. era yeah and the jazz yeah we, there's there's a lot of music a musical palette excuse me um that allows us to do different things and take the score in different ways and one thing that was so cool about the original is you know how snuffy was able to use singular instruments like the acoustic guitar to bring out the heart um, you know, of the Wonder Years. So for us, our, our, our cool task is to be able to find how will our band sound, um, still keep it groovy, still keep it funky, while giving the heart of this young boy growing up in his Wonder Years. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's amazing. Lots of cool, um, fun styles of music to play with. Mm -hmm. I had the fortune, thanks to ABC, I watched the pilot uh, the other day in preparation for this interview. And so this is not just a family slash coming of age dramedy. This show also has civil rights themes that resonate with uh, today's post George Floyd world. So mm -hmm. how do you strike the balance in your music between capturing the fun dynamics of the Williams and the sombering, heartbreaking mood of, you know, the show's racial themes, like in the first episode with uh, Dr. King? Does that difference of tone between the two provide challenges for you, the composers? I think, I think it's really really amazing to be able to have these different elements to tell a story right we're also writing our paper just has you know sharps and flats on there right uh -huh. so when we're thinking about it we're not thinking about these large 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 ideas going into it we're thinking about a boy and his father a boy losing his love interest the family dynamic and then zooming out and playing it how those elements are you know taking place in this world as it relates to you know the overtones of social unrest and the racial stuff going on in the 60s when you think about the 60s as a black person for myself you definitely think about the civil rights movement that goes without saying and so what we wanted to do was make sure we tell this family story without being heavy-handed in ways that you have seen before right we wanted to create some new opportunities to create relationships between these characters and set it in that time so you get this cool blend of all these elements within the storytelling and with the melodies that we're creating. There's also like an approach, uh, sort of the, the lens of innocence. You mean the original series? I mean, you, you said you didn't watch it, but the, the original series, you know, the longer you watch it, it, as a kid, it didn't hit me at first, uh, but it is titled The Wonder Years because it's about the wonder years of a boy's life, you know, starting to understand the world beyond the walls of his home and the edges of his street and the neighborhood. Uh, this reimagining is also the wonder years of a boy discovering the world beyond his family and his friends. It just so happens that he lives in Alabama, he's black, and it's in the 60s. So there are these elements that are very, very heavy, very, very terrifying. Um, but he's 
a boy, he doesn't quite understand all that. So it's interesting to play in that world sonically where he doesn't quite understand. We're, we have the benefit as the audience of knowing and realizing as adults what he's going through, but he doesn't. So that, that presents like a really uh, kind of a fresh perspective for us to, to write the score and create sound worlds because it doesn't necessarily mean that it, it just has to be heavy-handed and, and, and overly sad or scary. It's like he, he kind of discovers it. So there's like this great twist that it'll feel visceral and urgent and in the moment. Yeah, there, there's also, you know, you've seen the first episode, so the opening line where our, a brilliant screenwriter, Saladin, pens this, you know, amazing thought, um, voiced by um, Don Cheadle in the narration, talking about, you know, there's a pandemic going on, there was social and racial turmoil, there's an incredible, crazy election, and we're not even talking about 2020, you know? And so when people would zoom in, you know, 50 years from now, they'll be like, how did you survive in that time? It was all crazy, all the riots, <laughs> all the, you yeah. know, all the, the disease and people dying. And yes, that's very true. And but in the midst of that, there are times for family, for love, um, for relationship, for fun, for this cool interview we're doing. <laughs> and and I think it's important, you know, to to take that view on what the 60s were, especially for a black family. And I think that's been very interesting in a lot of the press that we've seen with the actors and um, you know the, the executives talking about that, that we wanted to imagine this family in a way that we haven't seen a black family growing up at this time and how the family unit and their relationship support them through it all along this crazy backdrop of that time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. As I'm winding down, I'm curious, a fun question. How does this collaboration team up of uh, both of you work? How do, I mean, how do you bounce off ideas off of each other? Specifically, what do you guys do when there are disagreements? That's a good question. <laughs> There's never disagreements. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, what you're looking at right now is how we work. Um, you know, you can't see it, but in front of us is a, a piano. Um, a computer behind it and we have a, a rack of synthesizers here pianos over here organ drum set guitars cellos uh, horns uh, so we spend a lot of time in this room and uh, we bounce ideas off each other we start playing um, you know I don't know how many musicians you talk to but a lot of us uh, we have a lot of self-doubt so you'll start writing an idea and you say oh this 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 idea isn't very good at all and the other person will go no wait that's fantastic don't stop uh, so uh, we end up saving a lot of ideas that normally would end up in the trash. Uh, that's the big one. Uh, when we do disagree, we both talk a lot, which is, I think, a good thing. So we, we kind of end up having to pitch each other. No, no, no. Trust me on this. It's going to be great because we're going to do this, that, and this. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've learned uh, t since we've got it now a history of working together five, six years or so, um, we can reference our own work to each other. Remember how this happened? I think we should do that. And then, you know, we still say, I'm warning you, man, it's not going to go over well, you know, uh, but that's that's how I see it. Yeah, I think just we just make space for each other. Right. Like if there's a is there's a thing that we're uncertain about. Hey, what do you think about this? I don't like it, but I'll do it if mm -hmm. or I trust you. Then I think that's really the, the answer to it is investing in the trust and uh, the the. the bare bones about it is we're gonna row through whatever mud together regardless like mm -hmm. if we if we mess up we're gonna have to pick it up together regardless so i think that's how we handle the disagreements but in terms of just the workflow every like every project is different as it specifically relates to the wonder years as jacob was saying we're here hours <laughs> like for hours and i'll start an idea he'll start an idea i'll hate my own idea he'll say it's great he'll hate his own idea i say it's great we'll add on to it we go through from two different daws from logic to pro tools sending forth back and forth files so it's a very collaborative process and it really helps on a project like this where it's, the demands are high time, as far as time is concerned right mm -hmm. so i know that if he's got something going on um with a couple cues he's doing i'll work on a few other cues and then we'll switch them back and forth review make sure we both love them and it's off to the races from there and finally what's next on your horizon i noticed that untitled Nicki minaj documentary that's awesome i'm a huge fan when is that coming out that's a very good question <laughs> another sir. good question uh i mean if you follow Nicki minaj you know that she's had a lot going on in in her life you know with her kid 
the father, uh, the marriage. There's just a lot happening, and the show is about her and requires a lot of interviews with her. So uh, the schedule has uh, shifted uh, quite a bit just due to um, her her time needed for interviews and stuff. So I think it was supposed to come out uh, this week, actually, uh, but it's been postponed a bit just for... Um, you know, logistical reasons. I don't think it's going to be postponed that long, but uh, yeah, we're very excited. We've actually been working on that for two years, yeah, quite some time. So, and, and as you yeah. know, it's full circle for me. So it's it's a it's a very very um, close project to my heart. Can't wait till it comes out. We're excited about it, but obviously we want it to be the best it can be. So once that drops, then you know the world's mm-hmm. going to be excited as we are for that. We also mm-hmm. have a, a cool documentary called The Show coming out on Friday um, featuring The weekend, talking about his Super Bowl halftime experience. And one of the craziest Super Bowl <laughs> halftime experiences we can remember with COVID and everything going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and also we're always writing for ourselves. Um, as soon as the craziness drops, we're definitely putting out music music mm-hmm. um, of our own for the world to hear in collaboration with various friends and cool artists. So stay tuned for that. Mm-hmm. All right. For my fans at home, everybody go check out The Wonder Years premiering tonight, September 22 on ABC. Jacob and Rowan, thank you so much for talking to me and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.